the most defining and controversial topics of this generation is the abortion debate. For both sides, this has become a sort of societal war with people on both sides condemning the other. Wow. Today, we'll take a, take a peek into those arguments. So serious. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Apples and Oranges, a show that tackles the issues of today by applying biblical principles. Great. I'm Ashley Duffner. I'm a mom and a student of the Bible. And I'm Jason Cardinosa, Christian and Missionary Alliance pastor for Alive Again Alliance Church in Tom's River. So Ashley, it's been a little (laughs) while since we've posted a podcast. I got to tell you, our fans are rather upset. I know it. (laughs) Rather upset. Well, first, let's apologize. Uh, We've had some technical difficulties. We've had a couple moves. You see there's a different background behind us. And the next one, there may be another different background. (laughs) Well, well, that's an upgrade, though. That's not a result of a move. Yeah. So the next time, well, yeah, it may be. Oh, we may be moving again now, for those of you that are listening. <laughs> this, is the, this isn't the Apples and Oranges show. This is the Move show. <laughs> so next time, we may have a different background, but the next time we move will be the last time. Okay. Where are we moving to? A cabin in the woods. A cabin in the woods. <laughs> Outstanding. Um, yeah. So we do have a few other changes that we're going to make, but this should be the last one. We can promise you that. So for those of you that are out there uh, and, and you listen to the show regularly, once again, we apologize uh, for not being on the air. We did have a couple of technical difficulties. But actually, let's get into the moment of hope. Oh, dun, dun, dun. I'm so glad you brought that up. We want to hear it today, Jason. Yes. <laughs> Let us know what it is. Well, it's interesting. It's about an Uber driver. The Uber driver was being held, uh, hailed as a hero after he stopped mid ride to rush into a burning brownstone in New York City. Oh, wait, I think I heard about this on the news. A del- well, why don't you share a little bit more about it? Wait, is this, did you just say a delivery driver? An Uber driver. Oh, I thought, it, oh yeah, that's a delivery driver, right? No, usually Uber drivers, they, unless you think that taking a person from one place oh, to another like is delivery. <laughs> okay. So I'm Uber thinking, driver is now in no, the delivery business. No, Jason, they do. They do <laughs> Uber Eats. Yeah, Uber Eats. This is Uber. Oh, it's just Uber? No this Eats? This is just Uber. Okay, anyway. No Eats. So anyway, this driver stops mid-ride uh, and runs into a burning brownstone. Do you know what a burning brownstone is? Is that a house? It is a house. It's one of those, uh, the, the the buildings. That, have you ever seen the Cosbys? It was a show in the 80s. Let's I've see. definitely seen it, yeah. Bill Cosby. Yeah, yeah. Right? Uh-huh. Uh, he lived in a, in a brownstone. Is it a... a it's a the, house with brown stones. There you go. You got it. You <laughs> nailed it. And anyway, so he helped rescue people uh, before the firefighters arrived. His name is Fritz Sam. He's 54. And he told today he was taking a passenger to New York's LaGuardia Airport when he noticed the flames and dark smoke coming out of a second floor window of a brownstone. He ran in and helped get out a woman and then a man. Not just one woman. He helped the woman and a man. Wow. When firefighters finally showed up, he let them take over and continued with taking his passenger to the airport. Oh, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, that is awesome. I definitely saw this on the news, though. I don't think so. I did. Amazon, (laughs) maybe UPS. No, it was the same story. Yeah, Uber's delivering people. But I can't believe that. Yeah, that's that is really heroic. And actually, I brought this up to Jake because I heard about this story on the news, and I was like. Like, he's on the news, and it's so amazing that he did this. And I'm thinking to myself, like, would I do that? Yeah. I think I would do that. Now, I'm wondering this, (laughs) and this may be a cynical question, but I'm wondering if he gave the person he was taking to LaGuardia Airport a discount. Because he's sitting there. For his interruption. Right, for the interruption. So now he's late. So now he's late. (laughs) Right. But all was well. The man made it to the LaGuardia Airport on time. He made his flight on time. So we just want to give a shout out to Fritz Sam, 54-year-old New York City Uber driver. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, rescuing a man and a woman. Uh, And so this is just a moment in time that uh, is a good moment. Mm -hmm. Um, Rather than when you turn on you know, Fox News or CNN and, and you, you... Oh, I can't do it anymore. Right. Can't do it anymore. <laughs> so we're bringing some... So, so today... Moments of hope. So today. So today we're going to be like Fox News and ABC. <laughs> I'm not going to be like Fox News. I am going to shout out some controversial statements and we're going to get to see Ashley's reaction. Woohoo! 
This should be fun. What's our topic for today, Jason? I'm not saying it. I'm a pastor. Oh, wait. Didn't we already say it? I think you said it in the opener, actually. <laughs> we did. Rewind. <laughs> our topic for today is <laughs> abortion. abortion. So uh, we're going to have a, a little bit of a conversation of abortion. Uh, and again, we're going we're gonna to maybe hear a little bit about the world's perspective. Uh, and then we're going to apply. Probably from me. <laughs> I would think from you. And, and you're going to share a lot more on this topic than I am. Uh, because I don't want listeners out there to think, well, he's a man. He doesn't know what we're thinking or what we're going yeah. through. Mm -hmm. So I am simply here today to provide some biblical insight. Okay. And then you can Well well I think it's gonna be a little different than people people think. So let's see how this plays out. Okay. Okay. So what yes. are we gonna discuss first? We're gonna talk about probably what the world thinks about abortion, right? I think so. Yeah. Okay. So that's you. So that's me. Okay. Yeah, you're up. So this is pretty hard for me because I'm actually on uh not on the side that Jason believes that I am on. I don't know where you're at. You don't know where I'm I at. I have no idea. That's why I said for our watchers that are watching us on YouTube, Apples and Oranges channel, we're going to get to see Ashley's reactions as I share some controversial statements from the Bible. <laughs> so I don't know <laughs> if it's because of how I... I don't, I don't really know why I believe the way well, I this believe. This is fantastic already. <laughs> we have no idea why we believe what we this believe. This is why we usually have a script written out, because yes. um, I can just say word for word what someone else thinks. No, yes. kidding. Um, well, anyway. let's pause for a minute, and, and just without worrying about what, what the script says, you're, you're a young female okay. living in the world today, uh, and so when, give us... Give us what your perspective of abortion would be or is. Okay, Give us so this what is your a stance is. This is a good way to start. I thought okay, so. Thank so, you. so my mother, she came out. There was this whole topic on abortion, right? Okay. She, we were sitting outside, just Jake and I, and she came out from inside, and I go, "Hey, Ma, this was a day that." one of the laws was passed that I forget what it was that abortion's illegal I guess in one state right because it's up is it it's up for the states right to decide so currently it is it has been given back to the states to the states to and decide so, okay. Roe okay. versus Wade yes and so um yes why did the monitor turn off it's okay okay so and so this was a day that that was decided that was overturned okay and so a lot of people were in an uproar about the fact that it was overturned, right? I don't know. You tell me. Yeah. Yes, it was. Oh, okay. It was. So my mom walks out, and I go, hey, mom. And I'm talking to her, and I'm like, this this was overturned, which means, like, abortion's illegal now. And she goes, she goes, oh, good. Like, yeah. she had no idea about what anyone else was saying about the topic. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, she was very... So she thought uninfluenced. Was, she was like, oh. "Oh, isn't that a good thing? Like they they can't kill babies anymore." Uh-huh. And so I was like, "Wow, you're right. Yeah." Like in the simplest way, she said it. Yes. And a lot of people it's funny to me because a lot of people in the world today are very upset with the decision. Sure. Because they're like they use all the other the other reasons why it shouldn't be illegal. Well, like what? What are those reasons? Hmm, let's think. Um the number one is like my body. It's my body, so it should be my choice, right? Okay. What, so, do you take that position? No. Okay. Why? So I don't take that position. My body, um, my choice. Is that the one you thought that I would be you? You would be against what I was thinking. The whole topic, honestly, any excuse oh. you give me for abortion, I'm not gonna agree. So you're not for abortion. Not, not at all. Okay. So, so, so any of choice, the reasons, my body, my choice. yeah, so, and a lot of people say, oh, it's like, it's not even a baby yet, this or that. So I like, so for me, it's the fact that when you get pregnant, you have a baby inside of you. Yes. It doesn't matter what stage it's at. It's still a baby or a life. Yes. And that's, that's just how I believe. And so when my mom said that, I was like, wow, like you'd think that a lot of people would think the same thing. Yeah. Like, oh, that's a great thing. People aren't going to kill babies anymore. Right. But for some reason, the whole world was so mad over over this decision. 
Well, I would, I would just, <laughs> I would say that a lot of people yeah. were upset about the decision. Yeah, I don't want to say everybody because I right. know that not everybody believes that way. Right. But. I mean, if you're, if you look at the whole of the United States, mm -hmm. they're, they're the majority of states mm -hmm. have banned abortions. Yeah. For from one level to another, so there, are, there are really, uh, there are really conservative states that have mm -hmm. banned abortion altogether. Yeah. There are other states that have said, well, if there is a life circumstance, such as maybe rape, mm -hmm. uh, it can be considered. And we live in uh, in one of the more liberal states mm -hmm. where uh, this state has said we'll, we will be, um, we will welcome those that can't get abortions in their home states. Yeah, where they live. Where they live, into our state. Uh, and so you're right, there are, there, are, uh, there are a lot of people on both sides of the aisle. Mm hmm and I kind of want to take back what I said. Like I'm completely, oh, she's already, she's like, already like, like I'm completely against abortion. Like there are obviously some reasons why I can see why someone would choose to do what they do. So like I can, I can understand from their perspective why they believe that way. And I think that's because the reason I believe the way I do is because I'm a Christian. So like I'm very faithful in our God. Yeah, but I, I would challenge that a little bit. What do you mean? Uh, well, you, you're you're prefacing the your stance on abortion because you're a Christian. No, I'm not. I'm not saying. Wait, what? You're you just said <laughs> I'm not for abortion because I'm a Christian. No. Okay. That's not what I meant. Okay. So what that's did you why mean? I was trying to say like that's not like I think some of the reasons okay. that I'm that I'm against it is because it's I'm a Christian, because you're but Christian. altogether I'm not for it. You're not for it. Okay. So like. Like because I, I told think you. That that's a very interesting point because that's why let's I, take abortion and put it over here for a second. Yeah. And let's take um, one of the Ten Commandments uh, that Moses came down from the mountaintop with mm -hmm. was a simple phrase. Yes. And it was, thou shalt not murder. Uh-huh. And it left gender aside. It left age aside. Mm-hmm. It was all inclusive. Mm -hmm. God said you should not murder. Yeah. And so whether you're a Christian watching us or whether you're not a Christian watching us, if you're standing on the side of the road, very, very, very few or a, a, a very small percentage of individuals actually have the urge to kill the person walking next to them. Yes. Right? It's like... It's not a lot. <laughs> so it's not a lot. And so so the idea that because my religion believes thou shalt not murder, it somewhat doesn't apply. Because non-religious, non-Christians also hold this, uh, this moral belief mm -hmm. that killing is wrong. What is interesting is why they believe that killing an unborn baby is okay. Is okay. Yes. That's see, the harder question. Now, see, I agree with you for that part. So that's why it's kind of like dicey when it comes to like b being a Christian, like saying that my my uh, faith has anything to do with it. Right. Is because there's other reasons why women say, well, I should be able to get an abortion that I believe are more related to having faith in God. Okay. Like, like yeah. for health reasons and doctors saying this or that. Yeah. Because I know miracles and things like that happen. Yeah, well, it's interesting here um, when you're talking about health reasons uh -huh. and aborting babies uh, to save the mother. Yes. So I just want to, I just happen to have some notes here. <laughs> and, uh, and and so here's an interesting note. And, and, uh, and then we want to, I want to get back to the biblical principles. Yes. A pregnant woman's life can be saved without abortion. Though sometimes the treatment can harm the baby, but often both lives can be saved. And here's the interesting point. Abortion is never medically necessary to save a woman's life. It's never. The Dublin Declaration, which has more than 1,000 signatures from obstetricians, neonatal neonatologists, excuse me for my pronunciation there, mm -hmm. pediatricians, 
midwives, and many other medical professionals state the following. Over thousands mm -hmm. of these medical professionals state that it is never medically necessary to abort a baby to save a woman's life. Here's what they say. As experienced practitioners and researchers in obstet ob obstetrics and gynecology, we affirm that direct abortion, the purposeful destruction of the unborn child, is not medically necessary to save the life of a woman. We uphold that there is a fundamental difference between abortion and necessary medical treatments that are carried out to save the life of the mother, even if such treatment results in the loss of life for her unborn child. We confirm that the prohibition of abortion does not affect in any way the availability of optimal care to pregnant women. See, I didn't know this was a thing. I'm sure a lot of people don't. Yes. Because if I shared this with someone who was completely for abortion because of this reason, they would be like, what? Yeah. Because I've never heard that before, and I've never seen someone use that as an argument. And these are, these are facts. Yeah. So, and I also maybe want to pause for just a moment, depending on how far you in, are into the podcast. And, and again, just a reminder, uh, today's podcast is the conversation around abortion. Um, is it biblical? Isn't it biblical? Is it right? Is it not right? And and so I do want to I, I want to pause and I want to say that uh, it is a sensitive topic, but it is also an extremely sensitive decision. Yeah. For uh, you know I I I know in my lifetime a few individuals who have made the choice to abort their baby, mm -hmm. um, and I've. I've counseled them after their decision because at the time, what they were going through physically and emotionally, it appeared to be the right course of action. Um, yeah. And so I don't, you know, when, when we're talking about the biblical view in that, I'm not negating the fact that it is an emotional topic mm -hmm. and it is one that, the, that primarily the, the female goes through. And I say primarily because a male does have emotional attachment to an unborn baby while it is in the mother's womb. Mm -hmm. And so this, this controversial statement of my body, my choice, the male really has no decision in the matter. Mm -hmm. I, f being a father myself, a mm -hmm. father of three, I would say that my own life experiences would, would point to the fact that I had an emotional attachment to the child in my wife's womb yeah i think a lot of a lot of men can actually agree with that statement yeah I, so I think, I, d I think that that's important too like not only is it not only your body because now your baby needs your body to survive right but also there's another party involved you right. know and i mean depending on the case it's case to case obviously they may not be in the in the picture so maybe it doesn't matter in yeah, that sense. No, and I'm I'm talking about, you know, the 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 husband and wife, the yeah, wife and the yeah, husband yeah. that are together mm -hmm. uh, and that that are walking life together. Yeah. I mean, I I can remember the times singing to my children while they were in their my my wife's womb and you know, just watching the baby move, watching the baby. Yeah. And and so uh, I do want to draw out one other fact uh, because one of the contours, whenever you really hear about abortion and then you hear about these states that are allowing for abortion, mm -hmm. there's usually always one thing, one, one part of the conversation that comes up. Yeah. At what point in time is the baby really a baby? A baby. Mm -hmm. And they always talk about the number of weeks. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to point out that uh, so that that is that whole um, it it's a clump of cells. Yeah. Yeah. It's not it's not really a baby. Yeah. So I do want to take us to some Bible scriptures that will help support the idea that um, that once the sperm leaves the male and goes into the female and then fertilizes the egg mm -hmm. that there is life through yeah. that whole process. A, the sperm in and of itself is alive, and when it goes to the egg, yeah, that's it fertilizes. I mean, I haven't done a lot of research on that topic, but I don't see how people can just decide 
So I want to hear what you have to say, though. So go ahead. Well, so <laughs> Psalms 139, verses 13 through 16. And again, uh, I don't know really who edits our videos, but um, they may put the <laughs> they may put these uh, scriptures in, Maybe not, though. in we'll the see. comments so that you can follow along. <laughs> Psalms 139, verses uh, 13 through 16 says, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. You knit me together, mm -hmm. okay, in my mother's womb. So this is talking about an actual process that the creator is going through with the created. Mm -hmm. The knitting together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full and well. My frame wasn't hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. Mm -hmm. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. <laughs> All the days ordained for me were written in your book. One of them came to be. Okay. Mm -hmm. Psalms 139 verses 13 through 16. Uh -huh. So if you believe the whole of scripture, if you believe that the Bible is is real, mm -hmm. right in that one scripture, you have the created praising the creator because while there was an unformed body, the creator was knitting the created together. Mm-hmm sperm going into the egg being fertilized being knit together yes then you have um so science science teaches us that a new human being begins at the moment of sperm egg fusion yeah so scientists don't even debate that yeah scientists say that the ba the human process begins sperm egg fusion otherwise known as fertilization once fertilization occurs well uh, don't they say though like it's it's like different stages though so like uh i i don't know the exact terms but like zygote and things like that like technically they say that's not a baby right well no, no? that's not right <laughs> because scientists actually say that once the f sperm and the egg create the fertilization and they go through the fusion mm -hmm. scientists then say the new organism takes on the same as its species mm -hmm. so once the f sperm and the egg go through the fusion process at that moment it takes on that which is the species thus being a human mm -hmm. this is in the science books these are in the journals the medical journals so this whole what what you're arguing, I believe, what people are arguing is the point in which the baby starts to, from a scientific standpoint, feel, starts to e experience emotion, starts to experience the ability to hear sound. A lot of individuals out there, again, this is a very emotional experience. And they're not going and reading all the scientist journals. Yeah. There a lot of times, uh, you know, but number one abortions in the world today are from young women under the age of 18 yeah. who have gotten pregnant, either consensually or through rape. Mm -hmm. One of the continents, Africa, is one of the leading continents oh, yeah. in the world mm -hmm. where you have this, you have genocide going on. Terrible. And so the number one is not only to kill off the race, but also to use and abuse the females and, so and have babies with them. Mm -hmm. And so there is a real conversation to be had out there. But And I could tell you those individuals are not going and saying, well, before I make the decision to have an abortion, can I talk to the scientists? Yeah. Or before I have my abortion, can I go and read the Bible? They're yeah. going and they're making emotional decisions based on their world that they live in. Yes. And so that's why we never cast judgment. We never cast uh, th this. Th we we hug them. We love them through the process. Yeah, I've known quite. I've known people that have gone through it, right. and it's it's really. It has to be really tough to be in a situation to be able to even make a decision like that. Yeah. So. And that's the extreme. Like I'm, I'm saying that you know, the, if you probably look at the statistics of the people that get abortions in America, uh, I'm sure that the higher end are due to rape victims. 
uh, or due to uh, incest that was that was unconsented and and all of these horrible horrible I wonder I do actually wonder what the statistics are on that do we have anything on that or no I don't have the statistics um, uh, let me see I, I may hold on a second um, continue your, your talking here um, I do have a couple here um, let me see here open but it, it so we want to recognize and again it that it is that it is really um, it is really a difficult emotional time for the individual going through it now there are some who unfortunately are callous to it yeah their line of their their world that they live in is you know it, or possibly it's possibly prostitution yeah and that's how they make their living and that's how they make their money and at times during the, while this is the only way they feel mm -hmm. like they can make money um, they get they get pregnant yeah and and so they're callous to the abortion process and they go through abortion but that mm -hmm. is again that is the minority uh, the majority of women are doing this because it was unplanned uh, and sometimes it's unplanned consensually and, and majority of time it's unplanned um, uh, unconsensual sex yeah. and and so now I, I and while I sympathize definitely and this is the part I definitely hear this argument where they say the male really has no place to speak into this part uh, and and I would somewhat agree when when a, when a woman um, is raped or uh, they go off to college and they start to have some fun mm -hmm. and they maybe they drink a little too much yeah and maybe they un you know while somewhat being intoxicated they consent to sex yeah and they get pregnant and they f they believe that their only avenue is abortion mm -hmm. i still well, again while i sympathize with that i cannot I cannot come across the, the or, or you know stray away from the holy scripture yeah everybody that i've talked to sadly that has got that has uh, had an abortion after the fact has told me the ruin of their life mm -hmm. after that part see evil begets evil mm -hmm. and so the evil act of uh, of of raping a woman or having unconsensual sex that evil act produces a baby the next evil act is aborting the baby killing the baby yeah. evil begetting evil mm -hmm. and and it's hard it's very hard but there are some some stories uh that are out there uh, that the mother decided not to abort the baby yeah and the beautiful miracle that the baby mm -hmm. turned out to be in life yeah. because the mother made the decision not to abort not to allow evil to beget evil and allow life mm -hmm. to come forth. See, when we step into the place of the creator, when we step into the place that says, you know what, there's no way if I have this child, the child is going to have a good life. Yeah. They're going to have a healthy life. They're going to have a successful life. There's no way. Mm -hmm. We've now stepped into the place of the creator. Yeah. And, and we're assuming. Well, that's the whole, like I said in the beginning, that's kind of where it's like, like, so my, the, where it gets entangled with like yeah. being a Christian because right. like the example you were giving, like mm -hmm. it's like hard to make that decision for anybody. I'm sure. And I would never have, I wouldn't want to be in a position where I had to make a decision like that from something like rape or something. Yeah. And yeah. it's definitely tough, but yeah. I mean, so so I just want to before we go because I want to give some scriptures that that talk about the rape victim. Mm -hmm. But I want to share this one more powerful scripture about the whole sperm fusion. Okay. There's there's a beautiful scripture, and and it can't be any more plain mm -hmm. when I read this. So it, it, again, it's all about you know when you base your life off the Bible, you the. The Creator will meet with you. Yeah. Jeremiah fifteen. Uh, Jeremiah one. Um, I get, uh, 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 There's a typo, so I think it's Jeremiah one five. We'll find it for you. We'll put it in the in the chat here or the message below. But it says this: Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Mm -hmm. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Now, this is God talking directly to Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. 
And God is saying here, before you were even formed in the womb, mm -hmm. I knew you. Mm -hmm. So that takes us to our rape victim. Yeah. The rape victim, the baby that is still in the womb of the mother, mm -hmm. God still knows that baby yeah. before it is formed in the mother's womb. Mm -hmm. And this whole idea of my body, my choice, mm -hmm. you're taking the place of the creator. Yeah. You're taking God out of the equation. Yeah. So that's where the Christianity comes in, because if you don't believe that, then it's like it's it's not I don't want to say easier, but there's no reason why you think that it's such a terrible thing. You know what I mean? Sure. So like. And, and the reason why I said I can understand why some people do that, even though I'm a Christian and I still don't believe it's right, right. is because they don't have that same belief. You know what I mean? They don't have that same faith. So right. it's different for them. It, it is totally different from them. So that's why I can understand why that's they choose right. what they choose, because it's just... They don't have the same thoughts. And not only that, usually the individual that is making these choices that are, that are not believers mm -hmm. are usually going about life as best they can. Yeah. And, and obviously they're in a tough situation. Right. Most now, of the time. Now, some of these individuals who may find themselves in, I, I think right now there are 33 or 36 states in, in the country that have outlawed abortions. Yeah. Uh, and so that goes back to my earlier comment sh saying that the majority of the states in this country are against abortion. Yeah. Um, the minority are for it. But if so, if you're living life as an unbeliever who doesn't know what the Bible says or doesn't have a, 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 a Christian group to go back to and say, hey, I got myself in this situation. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm thinking of having an abortion and having spe people speak into that life. Those individuals are influenced by the world around them. Mm -hmm. and, and right now, the easiest world around them is like you said fox news cnn news um mm -hmm. msn news uh maybe they go on the internet and and they search but you really have to do a lot of searching because you don't know what's true and what's not true on the yeah. internet you mm -hmm. don't know what's factual and and what is made up yeah and then you go to social media and you would dare i mean i i don't even know if social media allows you to post these things on because I don't think that I've ever really seen a post about abortion on on your bigger yeah sites. there was a yes there was when um the overturning happened of Roe uh, Roe v Wade. yeah they um there was a lot of stuff on social media actually I was trying to stay off because like I said when my mom came out she had she doesn't go on the internet or do any of that stuff so when she said that I thought it was just like so funny because it was so simple yeah. you know what I mean because if you go on the internet it was like a lot of people that I had on on Facebook or anywhere yeah. were really upset. And if you thought differently, they wanted to unfriend you. Yeah. So it was like, well, I'm not going to go on there because I don't want to feel like on attack. Yeah. And then when my mom said that, I thought, yeah, see, that's how I think. Like, you know, yeah. And but the majority of people that I saw on the Internet were like, opposite yeah and that's the sad part about i think right now where we are as a society mm -hmm. where you can't have s even I even if you want to say a controversial dialogue yeah if somebody comes to me they may say i'm not going to go to pastor jay because i know he's going to say abortion is wrong and you know what yeah i'm going to yeah but the problem with that is i'm going to say also after that i say abortion is wrong in my belief uh -huh. i'm going to say I'm going to encourage you to have the baby, and I'm going to say, I will be right next to you. Yeah. The day that child is born, and, mm -hmm. and probably I I if it's a mother who's in a city, while you're going to the doctors um, week after week, month after month, mm -hmm. I will walk alongside of you, yeah. and I will help you raise that child. Uh -huh. That's the difference. They don't even allow the conversation to get to that point. Yeah. To get to the point to say, you're not alone. Mm -hmm. See, God... God not only knows us in our womb, he knows the situations we're going to face. Yeah. And he provides all of our needs according to his riches in glory. Yeah. And again, there are far many more people who walk this world not knowing about God or not, not pursuing biblical beliefs or understandings. And, uh, and, and so that's the group of individuals that are tap and, and many Christians, uh, unfortunately, take abortion. But I want to go back to some Well, scripture. I just want to answer that really oh, quick. Yes. So um, go ahead. I think it's also like 
Christians today are doing not a very good job of they, like they believe a certain way, so yeah. they're like, "Don't do that." But then it's like, "Yeah, well, well, if they were, then how, what are they supposed to do?" You know, like who's there to help them along the way? And right. and I just feel as though we need to do a better job well, of of know. following up with that. Like you know, we definitely do. We we need to do a better job. We need to know, you know one of the thing the experiences that I come. Uh, up against often is uh, very similar to what you said if you say something wrong on social media your friends will defriend you yeah well uh, there is there is a very real um, situation going on right now in this world that says if I go out into public as a pastor and I uh, say that abortion is real there is a threat that I may lose my licensing because I'm speaking hate Mm -hmm. and and I am um, I'm advocating hate um, and so there's this hate language theme that's also going alongside of these very controversial topics. And, and so it is preventing the Christians from speaking out. Now, I still speak out because the reality is the Bible tells us as Christians that there may come a day where I become a martyr for Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. And that is, you know, if you follow the lives of many of the disciples, all of them, I think, except two, uh, died martyrs' death yeah. because they were speaking up um, about Jesus Christ, about the gospel. And so I will not stop speaking up and, and I will go into the streets and, and uh, into the sphere of influence um, that I have right now. My sphere of influence is a small community uh, in, in uh, the area that I live and social media right now mm-hmm. on, on our YouTube channel and Spotify. Yeah. And so I, I will help those that are listening know that it is a biblical principle that, uh, that abortion uh, is not right. Mm-hmm. Um, and if, if I unfortunately reap the martyr's uh, reward for that, then so be it. Yeah. Uh, because I firmly believe in the Bible. I believe in Jesus Christ and him crucified. I believe in God, the Father, and the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, there's, a, there's a beautiful song. I think it's by the Newsboys. <laughs> um, I'm not going to sing it. Um, <laughs> but it says that. We believe in God, the Father. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe oh, in the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. and the resurrection of life. Oh, okay. um, yeah, there we go. <laughs> so, so, but I want to, you know, I want to, I do want to provide some scriptures because maybe there's somebody listening and they're saying, you know what? I am, a, I am a rape victim right now, and I'm going through this situation. Yeah. And so help me understand from a biblical perspective. Um, and so one of, um, what, you know, just w- there's this statement out there right now, the guilty party in a sexual assault case is the rapist who should be held accountable to the fullest extent of the law. Mm-hmm. However, even in states that allow the death penalty, the crime of rape or sexual assault doesn't carry such a death sentence. Mm-hmm. So the individual who rapes the woman goes to jail and they may go to jail for the rest of their life. I don't I don't in some states. Maybe it's 20 years, 25 years. The, the, the point of the matter is they don't put that person to death. Mm-hmm. And so the counter argument is why would we consider putting the baby to death if mm-hmm. the person committing the act isn't put to death? That's one. Uh, why then should innocent children receive the death penalty for the crimes of their guilty father? Now, that is an important point. Mm -hmm. Why should the innocent child that is being knitted in the mother's womb be uh, put to death? Why should they hold the crimes of their father? And here's why that's an important point, because it's a biblical principle. Mm -hmm. Since it's unfair to hold a born uh, a a, a born child responsible for the crime of her father. So it is with a preborn child. Here's the scriptures. Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 16 says this fathers shall not be put to death because of their children nor shall children be put to death because of their fathers each one shall be put to death for his own sin Mm -hmm. so that applies from a biblical standpoint to the unborn child because they're a child from the point of sperm to egg Mm -hmm. And the child should not be put to death for the father's sins. Here's another one. First Thessalonians 5, 15. See that no one repays anyone evil for evil. I said that earlier. Mm -hmm. But always seek to do good to one another and 
to everyone. Mm-hmm. To everyone. And that and, and I just love how God he he says to one another and so the argument could be, well yeah, but that's talking about one another, the born one another's. Mm-hmm. But then he says, and to everyone mm-hmm. because he re- he knows and he cares for the child in the womb. Yeah. The last one, Exodus twenty three seven says this don't kill the innocent and righteous, for I will not acquit the wicked. Mm-hmm. And so that that scripture there is talking about the innocent and the righteous unborn baby, mm-hmm. right? And, and and anybody else who falls in that category. So these are just some scriptures to help those that are that are raped. Right, and and again, I am not. I, I please, I I'm not unsensitive to the situation. Yeah. Uh, I can only imagine. I, you know. Uh, I can only Im- imagine the horror that some individuals may experience mm-hmm. in these situations. But the, the, what we don't want to do is we don't want to continue to um, allow evil to beget evil. Yeah. Hard situations, what I would say is this. Read your Bible. Mm-hmm. I would also say this. There are many Bible-believing churches all yeah. across America yeah, I think it's important to reach out to somebody, you know. Yeah, if you find yourself in one of these situations, I could tell you, if you come to Alive Again Alliance Church in Toms River, New Jersey, or now we've opened up a campus in uh, New Egypt, uh, New Jersey, the, the, the New Egypt Jackson area of New Jersey, if you come there and if you, if you say, if you let us know your situation, A, it will be held in utmost confidence mm-hmm. um, and confidential. Uh, we won't share it with anyone. And B, the first reaction you're going to get from us most likely will be we'll wrap our arms around you yeah. and and then and then we'll walk alongside of you mm-hmm. uh, because these are not easy circumstances these are these are circumstances that are born out of sin yep and some not like i said i i, I can't speak for everybody because some individuals uh, they they're living uh, a sinful life yeah. um or uh, they're in these circumstances where um you know, maybe a lapse in judgment, wh- whatever the case may be. Yeah. Um, it, it, you just you just got to be sensitive to it all. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, if you're going through a circumstance and or if you know somebody who's going through a circumstance where they're considering abortion, I would say I would ask you, I would implore you. Right. Right in the comments. Uh, get in touch with me, or, mm-hmm. you know, get in, uh, call me or, you know, if you don't want to be that revealing, uh, you can email us um, at, uh, what's it? Uh, alive again, N-E at gmail.com. Alive again, N-E at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. You can also go uh, to our website, alive again, alliance um, dot com. Uh, and you can click contact us. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're here to help. We're not here to condemn. We're not here to judge. We're here uh, to walk alongside those that are struggling in this in in these decisions because mm-hmm. they're hard decisions. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, listen, I I hope that we were delicate on the topic, but yet firm, somewhat. No, yeah. we weren't. No, we, I think we were pretty delicate. Yeah, you think so? Kind of. I I hope our listeners will I, tell us. I really hope they don't take it as as a harsh way. Well, I hope they take it in love. In love. Because yes. the, I mean, at the end of the day that that w- a we need to we need to stand firm mm-hmm. on our, beli- uh, our our biblical beliefs. Yeah. And we can't sway from that. Yeah. Uh, and I, I th- it's important for people to know that we don't we're not hating somebody who makes that decision, oh, you know. Yeah, no, it's just no. it's just not what we believe. No, def- definitely not hating. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, yeah, definitely not hating um because uh, these are tough circumstances. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Lo- you know, we we love everybody. Um, we love we love the person. We hate the sin. Yep. You know, that's that's one of those sayings yep. out there. Mm-hmm. And uh, God only knows the next circumstance I find myself in. Yep. And uh, the decision I make, I only hope and pray that it will be guided by biblical belief and uh, mm-hmm. and uh, words of wisdom and knowledge from my brothers and sisters. Yep. Um, that walk alongside me. Mm-hmm. So, uh, well, that about does it here for apples and oranges. Again, we apologize for not being on. I, I hope this one records. Uh, that's <laughs> I hope I we don't have any technical difficulties uh, this time. I was a little scared when that screen shut off there. Um, but <laughs> no, it does uh, that. Don't I, worry. We we hope that you enjoyed our show. Yes. Uh, hopefully, we got we got some thinking going on. Or 
hopefully you know. we get you in your Bible. Yeah. Um, we'll, and we'll provide some more uh, scripture for you when we when we publish this. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, again, if you know of anybody, share it with them. Uh, we'd love you to become uh, subscribed to our YouTube channel, Apples yes. and Oranges. Uh, you can uh, listen to us on Spotify, um, iTunes. Apple Podcasts. Oops, Apple <laughs> Podcasts, not iTunes. What is iTunes? Is that a thing? Anymore? Yes, that's to listen to music Can on like an iPod. Can we on that? No. Oh, we can't. Okay. No. Apple Podcast. That's why they created Apple Pod- Podcasts. Oh, that is, huh? Uh-huh. Uh, iTunes is like a store where you can buy music. I think we could put our podcast on there. No, if you, you think we could put our podcast on <laughs> iTunes, message us. Uh, well, that about does it for us. We hope you have a wonderful week. We'll be back here again next Friday. 7 p.m. is when we, uh, we go live, right? Yep. Thank you all for listening, and we'll catch you next time. Bye.